Hey, 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 what's going on? What it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again, man. And hey, what can I say, man? It's just another day, another dollar. Just another blessing to be alive. How about that? You know, with everything going on in the world, you got to be blessed to be alive. Breath in your lungs. That's all there is to it. It's raining outside right now. Um, trying to get a little light in here, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, how are you guys feeling, you know, with everything going on? You know, are we – what do you think that's going to happen with the football? I mean, as far as the season goes, we know that the NFL, as of now, they're not making any changes despite of certain players having the virus. Um, a lot of these players are asymptomatic because the, for the simple fact they're athletic. I think a lot of that has to do with their immune system. You know, the the more um, healthy you are, I guess, like athletic or whatever you are, you know, it, it helps your immune system stay stronger. So a lot of athletes don't normally get sick. And when they do, they pass it very fast. And I know when I played football, when I played just sports, period, you know, um, you know, my immune system was very strong. Now, I rarely ever got sick. Now, now even though I don't play organized sports like that anymore, I still am active. I'm still running. I'm still lifting weights. I'm still, you know, doing different things now, but I'm always active. So, you know, and I take multivitamins every day. You know, I'm in my thirties now. So, you know, you gotta take your multivitamins, man. You gotta do that on a daily basis, everybody, you know, but enough about the vitamins more about the undrafted guys now we talked about this undrafted series that i've been doing um we're continuing that thing and keeping it moving guys because again you know i know i understand the situations right now but you know we try to stay positive on the channel we try to you know make sure that we still pumping the things out you know shout out to all the other youtubers out there doing the damn thing um <clears throat> keeping you guys entertained and informed because that's that's what it's all about now this guy another guy from tcu matter of fact <laughs> the guy right next to the last guy that i talked about so we talked about um darius jet anderson in the last video now we're going with his teammate fellow running back i guess you could say but actually a fullback um siwo on louis how you pronouncing it on Siwo Al. Okay, so his name is pronounced <laughs> Siwo Olan E Lua. I'm I'm assuming I'm assuming he's Samoan, um, from Hawaii. Um, you know, uh, it's almost like a uh, shout out to uh, Skywalker Steel. He couldn't say his name. Um, to a Tiger Valoa. It's like that. You know what I mean? Like these guys are. You know, <laughs> their names are hard to say, but it, I, I love their names, though. I really do. I would love to know what they all mean, but yeah. So it's pronounced Siwo on, on, lon, Olan E Lua. Olani Lua. Olani Lua. He's a fullback, but I think that, honestly, I think that um, going into the NFL. You can play him both ways. And I'm going to talk more about how he can be that versatile running back, fullback type of guy for you. But again, TCU guy, same as Darius Jet Anderson. He's 6'3", 240 pounds. This dude is the same weight as me. And y'all know I'm these big, broad shoulders. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I know I could, I could bowl through some things. So, you know, I love being the size I am now. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm big and strong. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he is. You know, but again, normally when you're a bigger player, you're not as faster. So, but he doesn't need to be. So check this out. 6'3", 240. He was um, NFL PA Collegiate Bowl recipient. Um, he was an NFL Combine invite, just like some of these other guys that I um, spoke on before. He was the Cheez-Its Bowl Offensive Most Valuable Player. Um, those are some of the awards and recognitions that he got um, as a, as as much as the combine invite. Now, uh, we talked about Seawall before, like when when he first got picked by the Cowboys after the draft. Um, I feel like 
you know, I know some of you guys already know his game. Like, you know, he really is a guy that if whatever they choose to do with, you know, Olawale, if they decide they want to keep him as the fullback. But I think that Olawale still has value. But I'll explain both of these guys because it, it kind of ties together and makes sense. Now, um, he has a legitimate chance at being a running back in this league because of his size. Now, Again, depending on what team is going to have him, whether the Cowboys decide they want to keep him on a practice squad or whatever the situation may be because we already have a fullback. Um, or he ends up going, or he's just with the training camp with the Cowboys and he just has that practice and he goes with another team, another team that doesn't have a fullback that has, says, hey, you know, we haven't been using a fullback, but maybe we can use a guy like this. We can use him in different ways. Now, he's a, he's a multiple threat. You can use him in different ways. Now, um, his ability to block these agile defensive ends, I mean, he's really good. I mean, you know, he's almost like that that second offensive lineman for you. Like, because he, he's, a, he's a big body guy, but, but he can also move as well. Um, he has innate ability to get to the next level so he can block and get to the next level. So basically, when the running back is running and he's that lead blocker, he's blocking, making way for that running back into the second level. That's the stuff that Joe Looney does. That's the stuff that 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 Zach Martin does. That's the stuff that um, Travis Frederick did. So you look at what these guys and how offensive linemen are set up on this team. Sewo is is a great addition to that. You know what I mean? Because again, you just got that extra guy that can also be a receiver. That can also be a pass catcher. Because I'm gonna talk about that too. So he can do different things for you. So that's actually a good thing. Um, he uses his frame to create space as a pass protector. Um, you know, like I said, you know, we always talk about pass pro all the time. That with this team, Mike McCarthy's looking for pass protectors like Ezekiel Elliott does. You know, you got to have that innate ability to know where um, you got to catch a sneaky safety or a sneaky cornerback trying to blitz. And you catch them and, you, and, and you're able to block them off so they don't sack your quarterback. So, again... His ability to do that, that helps as well. Um, as a ball carrier, though, he's more of a short yardage type of guy. You're not going to use him on third down and grinding yards. Now, you can you, if you want to grind short yardage, yes. But if you're trying to get to the second level, that's not the guy that you should be running the ball with. Now, if you got him and Darius to Jet Anderson, you can use Jet Anderson as that, as that you know, um, open lane guy and then you use Siwo to come in there to grind those short yardage situations out third and one fourth and one third and two second and five you know you can get that out of Siwo um he's a really good blocker that 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 is his strong suit as a fullback he is a really good blocker but if you're going to use him as a running back um, like I said, short yardage, goal line situations. If you need a fourth and one play, if you if you need a crucial fourth and one on the goal line, that's who you put in the game. You put Sebo in the game on those crucial fourth and one plays. That's the type of guy that can grind you that yardage or that or those inches, I should say, because you know it's third and one. It's only one yard, but you get those inches. To that, to that um, goal line and get that score. Now, um, we talk about red zone and things of that nature. That's that's a pretty good weapon to have, you know, because you have options. Because everybody knows you're going to run with Zeke Elliott. Everybody knows you're going to do some trickery with Tony Pollard. But if you got Sewo on your roster, they don't know him. They don't know what he's going to do. And you have options. There's so many different things you can do. Um, Another thing about him, he can also catch the ball out the backfield. Now, I talked about um, using him as a potent, for t potential targets. He had about 24 receptions for TCU, you know, total during his time there. You know, for a fullback, that's pretty good. You know, considering your whole time there, you had 24 receptions because, again, who passes the ball to the fullback like that? I know Mike McCarthy did a lot with when he had John Kuhn, 
when he had him as a fullback. And we know John Kuhn was a pretty good damn fullback. Um, he was actually kind of like a model fullback that a lot of teams use. And was like, we want a guy like John Kuhn. So that's how McCarthy used. We know that McCarthy likes fullbacks. So if you were to use a guy like Sewell, say, in a situation like that, um, you can use him as a pass catcher. Um, sweep the ball to the outside, wide open, boom. Get him in there, boom. Another short yardage play. It don't have to be for a lot of yards. It could be a five yard to the touchdown. It can be five yards to the first down. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, those are different ways that you can use him. Now, the thing with uh, that that makes him not the, the reason why he wasn't drafted, I should say. Not I can't say I can't say not draftable because it already happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, give me a break. You know what I mean? But the reason why he wasn't drafted, he takes some time to get up to speed. Again, 240 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like this guy is not the speedster like the Jets, Anderson. He is a guy that's going to bowl you over, but that's about it. He's just going to get you, boom, there. Initial hit, there. He's not a guy that's going to um, get some missed tackles in the open field. He's not that type of guy. Like I said, it takes him a while to get up to speed. You know what, running backs, you got to hit that hole and hit it hard. If you're going to use him as a running back, you're not getting – to the second level with him, not with that speed, not with these NFL linebackers coming bearing down on you. It's not going to happen. Um, he's limited when it comes to that. He's limited to just running in between the tackles. You know, it's just do 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 boom, just simple things. That's what he does, and that's why he's good in short yardage. Um, he struggles to find the edge with lack of explosiveness. We talk about that lack of explosiveness. No burst off the line. Just his, his speed. It just he's he's slow to get started. But once he gets up there, he's all right. But you know, in the NFL, you got to have initial speed. That's what they're looking for. Um, but like I said, if you need if you need to convert that fourth and one, that's your guy. Um, lastly, to compare him to what we already have with Jermaine Zolawale. Now, I like Jermaine Zolawale. Now, one thing I want to get you guys to understand, I've been trying to talk to you guys about this for a while. Jameis Olawale, even though they, the Cowboys didn't use him a lot, come on now, we was in Jason Garrett offense. It's like, you know, you, you predicate everything on on having a fullback, but you never really use it. Like, I just feel like Jameis never really got an opportunity like that with the Cowboys. And when he did, they just kind of forced it. So they forced the play. And you expect him to turn around and catch the ball, and he's not ready for it. It's just like, okay, because you forced the play. You can't force plays in the NFL, Jason Garrett. You, you got to let things happen. And if it happens, keep manipulating it. And, and if you're going to beat the team that way, whoop their ass that way. That's how you do it. But any other way, you just got to think smart. It's just common sense. I just don't understand it. Like, you're a Princeton graduate, but it doesn't matter. He's not the coach anymore. I don't know why I'm even dwelling on that. But I'm just using that as an example. The reasons why we haven't seen much of what he can do. Because we know, we already know that Jermaine Zolawale can play. It's the simple fact that we've seen what he did with the Raiders. When he left us after he was undrafted, when he went to the Raiders, he did some good things with the Raiders. Come back to the Dallas Cowboys, all of a sudden we don't do the do the things. It's just it's just the way that we use him. And uh, some of you guys have to understand that some players just don't play well in certain schemes. But I just would love to see what a Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy could come up with with Jameis Olawale. But if you keep Sebo on that um, practice squad, or if somehow something happens with another running back and you got him as a reserve guy, who knows? I, I think that um, with him. He's definitely a guy that you can use with special teams. He's a guy that you can use because he would basically be a special teamer, right? And if and if he was the primary fullback, you can use him in the ways that I explained in this video. So let me know what you guys think about um, Seawall on Louis Lua. On the lawn. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I butchered it again. Olani Lua. Olani Lua. Olani Lua. Olani Lua. Olani Lua. That's his name. So... Um, let me know what you guys think about Alani Lua. Um, TCU guy, teammates with Darius the Jet Anderson. Now they're also on the same pro team. So let's see see if they can both make the team. Who knows? Um, you know I'm all about trying to get the underdog in there. I love the undrafted guys because I because they 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 have 
grit. They 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 want it. You know what I mean? Because they know how hard it took for them to get there, and they didn't get there the traditional way, so they got a lot to prove. So I love to see the underdog. So that's just me. I root for the underdog. Thanks again, all my subscribers. Appreciate you guys. Those of you that are new to the channel, don't be afraid. Go ahead. Hit that button. Hit that button. Hit that button. Mm. Tap it. Get these notifications for your boy. You know why? Because it's your boy, E2Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a great day.